Democrat Morgan McGarvey is one of nearly 80 new U.S. House members in the 118th Congress. The father of three told C-SPAN about his political philosophy, how he's balancing time between Washington and Kentucky, and about his family's prominent role in a multi-decade National Geographic project documenting their lives. This is kind of one of those wild, one-of-a-kind stories uh, that, that I was born into. Um, but the, the Louisville paper used to be owned by a family who really invested in journalism, really invested in photographers and writers. A lot of talent was coming through the Louisville Courier Journal, Louisville Times. And back in the 70s when birth photos were all the rage, there was a young photographer named Pam Spaulding who said, you know, birth is cool and exciting, but it's really bringing that child home that changes a family and, and what life looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. So she went to several families in the area and said, can I do a photo essay story on you for a full year of bringing your child home? Everybody turned her down. So then she gets to my mom and dad, uh, who were pregnant with my older brother at the time. And my dad had worked his way through college and law school in Lexington as a television reporter. And so she said, can I follow you guys for one month? And he just felt like he couldn't say no. So they did it for one month, then they did the story for a year, and then she kept coming around. And now 46 years later, uh, she is still documenting our family. And it's not about us, it's about life. Um, 30 years in, National Geographic released a book. It was the first time we'd seen any of the pictures. We still don't see the pictures, we don't get them. Uh, it's very much in her vision, shooting the everyday and the ordinary so that 100 years from now people will say, this is what it looks like when a family ate at McDonald's. This is, this is what type of car they drove. I mean, even think about in my lifetime, going from landline phones to cell phones and what that looks like just in the everyday life. And so it's a one of a kind project. I don't think anyone has done a project of that scope or that type before. And it is, it's kind of wild and it's certainly an icebreaker in conversation. Um, when people say, tell me, tell me something about yourself that, that we might not know. So she's following your family yeah. around. And how often is she with your family? And tell us about your kids. Yeah, so, so most of the time she really focuses on the ordinary. Uh, she will come over and she'll photograph us in the chaos of the morning, you know, trying to get one ready for preschool, two ready for elementary school. My wife works full time. I might be running for office and, and what that sort of looks like and the, the chaos. Uh, she comes around for the holidays. She comes around for things like that. And then, of course, when something big happens. She was in D.C. Uh, for the infamous first week of this session where uh, certainly she got more of a story than, than probably she thought, but is here for the big moments, but really focuses, I think, on the little things. And again, we don't see the pictures, which I think people find interesting. I'll not see a single picture from when she was in Washington, D.C., but uh, I hope that at some point, you know, her work, again, probably after I'm, I'm gone, uh, is recognized for just the, the historical document. I think it'll, it'll tell. How old are your kids and what do they think about National Geographic documenting your lives. Yeah, so um, we have twins who are in the fifth grade, and then we have a four-year-old, and they just—they've never seen the pictures. They've—they've they've never seen any of her work. She's just kind of been around. Of course, she's been around for so long. They just accept her as part of the family, and so when she shows up, she'll, they'll go, "Oh, there's Pam," and that's—that's that's it. They don't—they don't give it a second thought. What do the kids think about having their dad in Congress? Yeah, um, it was really interesting. So I, I started in the state senate and have been in the state senate. I ran for the state senate after the twins have been home from the hospital for about four months. And so they kind of grew up in Frankfurt and going to the state capitol. It, it really took a little bit of explaining to understand how this is different. Uh, in fact, when we came up for freshman orientation, you know, we've been gone, it's the longest we'd ever been away from the kids. So we went down to the gift shop and we bought them little t-shirts with the House of Representatives logo on it. And we brought them home and they, just couldn't care less. Oh, great. Thanks for the t-shirt, mom and dad. Uh, fantastic. Then after we brought them up here for the swearing in and they got to see the Capitol and they got to see, you know, the hustle and bustle of Washington, the monuments, they don't take those t-shirts off now. Uh, they sleep in them every night. They wear them out on the weekends. And so um, I think now they think it's a really cool thing and they're starting to understand um, how awesome it is to be in Washington. You have three little kids, your wife works full time. Mm -hmm. How are you balancing Washington and home? I don't know if we are successfully balancing it right now. We're, we're doing the best we can. Uh, we're a couple of weeks in and so you know, we certainly are scheduling FaceTimes with the kids and uh, communication helps so much. Um, and then of course trying to to find ways to block time when I am home to make sure that we have some hours where it's just the family or you know that I, I get to take them to school or I get to pick them up from a sporting event at night and work around the schedule. You majored in journalism. Mm -hmm. 
How come? What, in, what was your interest in journalism? Yeah, when I, when I went to college, I went to the University of Missouri to major in journalism. Um, that's how I wanted to change the world. I, I still believe in the power of the press, in the power of journalists to tell a story, to tell someone's story, to, to monitor what's going on. It was actually at the University of Missouri where I became a television reporter for the NBC affiliate out there, KOMU NBC8, which is owned by the university. And during that time was when all of the Bush v. Gore stuff was going on. And then, I don't know if, if you will remember, there were, there were two famous Missouri politicians, a guy named Mel Carnahan, who was the sitting governor running against the sitting U.S. Senator John Ashcroft at the time. Uh, governor Carnahan's plane crashed and he, he unfortunately passed away a few weeks before the election. He had to remain on the ballot. Then the governor said, I'll appoint his wife. Big national news story. And there I am as a junior in college. It's happening in our backyard as I'm a journalism major at Missouri covering it. And that's actually how I started to get interested in politics, is uh, covering the state capitol in Jefferson City, Missouri, covering big events like that and saying, you know, I really, I'm very interested in what's on the other side of the camera and the change they're making as policy makers instead of what we're doing covering the change that they're making. Where does your political philosophy come from? Yeah, you know, I think that in, in life, um, not just in politics, we're judged by how we treat others, by how we treat those on the margins, by standing up and making sure that everybody has a voice, that everybody has a say. I think that kind of grounds me in the core of what I see as government service. It's it's going and standing up and really truly fighting for the people you represent, fighting for what you believe is right, but also not losing the sense of why we're here, right? To fight for people, but also to get things done. Who taught you that? You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I think, you know, my, my parents have really strong values and, and raised us all with a really strong value system and maybe an eye towards public service. My brother is still active duty military. Uh, my sister is a teacher, now a counselor in a public school system in Kentucky. Uh, I've been in the state Senate and now doing this. So, you know, I know people haven't asked me who, who taught me this, but, you know, in looking back, maybe it's not an accident, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe it's not an accident that all three of us ended up in public service.